being prepared for things going wrong. Um, I would say I'll talk. I'll talk about the Philippines because I'll do two videos. I'm going to do this one on the Philippines one. I'll do another one on the Spanish channel. First thing I want to say is a lot of people assume that I'm in a much more stable position than they are. Um, I'm probably in exactly the same, or sometimes even worse. Sometimes the reality is with the call center. We'd had a good run, but we'd also, towards the end of the, the year when we set it up, um, received an earthquake and a typhoon, which obviously had some negative impact effects. Um, what I always try to do is just keep some money in the bank. Where people go wrong is they'll go, ooh, I'll, I'll get through this month, and you know they start eating into the reserves try not touching the reserves and I know it's hard because I mean myself I have this three month window if I'm running into that three months I'm on the plane to go and rebuild some money somewhere do not let it get down to one month or whatever because you need some flexibility um, the, I know somebody else mentioned about well the cost of living in the UK is hard to find cheap places etc you hunt around gum trees an amazing place for cheap places um, crash on somebody's sofa, whatever you need to do. Um, if you hit a bad bad turn, just get it. You know, pick yourself up and move on. And it's how I get on. I mean, I I'll be honest with you, I don't always have a good run. You know, when we were first married, etc., we had a limited budget. I had about six thousand pounds in the bank, but we also did renovations. Then we had some family issues. Um, which uh, didn't go down well. We ended up having to move house and all that sort of fiasco. So it doesn't always run smooth for me either. The call center, when I first set it up, I used some of my money that I made in Oman. And what I found is the first month, I was losing money every week. But then it just started, you know, breaking even. And then it went, woof, you know, shot forward in, into some good profit. Would I do it again? Would it? Well, the answer is yes. I'm just looking for the right people to work with. Um, the problem I have, you see, is I'm worth quite a lot as a surveyor and FM manager. If, if it, I, I'm worth, what's that? Say, let's just call it $800 a day as a surveyor. So me running a call center, I can earn more than that. But me... With a small coal center trying to build it back up, I'm a, I'm one of the basic, biggest expenses in the building. This is why I want people to work with. At the same time, with me working, I've got financial ability. Um, because, like I said, with your first contracts, what happens is you're throwing money away. You, you're finding that some of the contracts are completely duff and you lost lost a few hundred dollars here and there. The next one, you make one and a half thousand. That's the way the industry is. It's a very volatile business. It's, I mean, I was in the um, double glazing, the windows, years and years ago, but only for a short period. I think it was only about a month or something. Yeah, it was only about a month. Now, with that, that was even knocking doors. But the reason I was doing it, I couldn't get a job anywhere at the time because that, that, that's one of the things I do have that people not always do is... I'll go flip burgers in McDonald's if I had to. I'll do whatever it takes. I'm not fussy on whatever is needed to make it happen. What hap What is the important bit is the end. The beginning, the bit in the middle, don't worry about it. Um, like I said before, I've been jet washing uh, Eurofighter parts down, absolutely soaking wet, 16 hours a day, 7 days a week, all this liquid in my eyes and stuff. Did I complain? No, because the focus was I need to get this car to get out of this town because I was back in Worcester. I'd sold everything when I went to the Philippines, so I had no assets. Um, so when I come back to the UK, I come back with nothing. And I still had some money in the bank, but it was a thousand pounds. It might have been one and a half thousand for the first month. But Getting on that hamster wheel of getting back into the system is what you need to do. And that's what I'm saying. If, you, if you're down, don't sit there and mope about it. Kick yourself up a couple of gears. Get yourself moving. Stagnation kills everything. It really does. This, this is why people get in this rut. This is why people say, well, I'd love to do what you've done, but I can't because 
I have a mortgage, I've got the car to pay off, I've got X, Y, Z. They've got into a rut. See, I work a very different way. And you'll see in the Spanish video that I'm about to do after this one that something's just gone wrong for me, but I'm sitting there crying about it. But anyway, the whole point is, when I look at the way things are, I go, right, I need to find a way to get rid of that. If I've got a mortgage, how do I get rid of a mortgage? I know what. I'll, I'll rent some of the rooms out. Oh, yeah, but I, I need to live there. Okay, well, you do what um, a Brit in the Philippines has done. He's rent his house out and went to the Philippines. There's always a solution. It's whether you want to find it or not. Because the driving force is always going to be you. But this what I'm saying. If you're in the Philippines and hit a hard patch, don't sit there. If you've got limited funds, start working on it now. Don't ignore it. Find a solution. Because when you don't, this is where people fall into really hard times because you run out of your airfare, your your visa expires, etc., etc. I know people in the Philippines that have had visas eight years out of date, um, and they dread being caught with anybody, and they can't even go back to the UK because they're stuck. Um, well, UK or US, they they're stuck there because they can't go anywhere near anybody with immigration. Their passports are even expired. They're stuck. They can't get a new passport because they haven't got any money to buy one of those either. But what do you do about it? You could sit there and go, oh, well. Or you sit there and go, right, put on the uh, the big pants and let's find a solution to this. How am I going to make some extra money? Okay, I'm going to get fined for not my visa not being up to date. So how do I fix that? I need to make this money that's going to cover that. What can I do? What can I? Do? What have I got? And you need to sit and work at it pretty hard. It, um, it's try and not get in that situation where you can't move forward. You need to be able to at least get on a flight and back to some work if you get really stuck. Um, I do it. I mean, even if something went drastically long in Spain, I would hop into the UK, do three three months work, and we'll be back in Philippines or Spain for another year. All right, thanks for watching. Yeah.